What's up? Can you hear me? Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, okay. This is a new thing. I'm going to start recording now. Instead okay. of talking to you, getting to know you, and then doing a podcast. All right. Sounds just, good. Just like this. I don't know you at all. all right. Perfect. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, and let's see. What's your name? And how'd you get into powerlifting? Uh, so my name's Krishna Silva, and uh, I got in about two years ago with one of my best friends who now passed away. We both started doing it together, and then when he passed away, I just kind of kept on the legacy with him. That was was he your age? Yeah, my age. What what happened? Uh, he committed suicide about a year and a half ago. That's horrible. Yeah, yeah. So it's still hard to deal with a couple of times. Still eats me up. You, you, you know, um, there's always times in lifting where you don't want to do it. I've had periods like from when I started powerlifting where I stopped, I just got discouraged because I wasn't doing well. Uh, does the memory of your friend help you going forward? Oh, uh, yeah. It's the only reason I get up in the morning and do what I do, to be honest. It keeps me moving. Um. What uh, records do you hold in powerlifting? Do you hold any? Uh, right at the moment, none. But uh, over the summer, I'm going for the uh, amateur 220, 275 junior multiplier world records for mm -hmm. RPS. What, what yeah. organization? Uh, RPS. RPS? Yep. Okay. What, um, do they have multiply, single ply, raw? What, what kind of like categories do they have, RPS? Yeah. So they have raw, raw modern, raw classic, uh, single ply, and multiply. <laughs> it's kind. Of, there's so many now. Yeah, because I think the difference from classic and modern is just you got to use wraps. Yeah, yeah. Um, do they do the strict curl in RPS? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Uh, what about the overhead press? Uh, some people are doing that now. I don't believe the RPS is. I think there's actual different federations that allow it in now that I've been watching them. Yeah. I, I My organization, 100% Raw, has a strict curl. I, I like it. It's, it's fun. I, I think it's fun. I, I like the you, What federation? It's called 100%. I know everyone, when I say it's 100% Raw, everyone asks what federation it is. The name is 100% Raw. It's kind of, it confuses. <laughs> it's like who's on third base, you know, the joke. <laughs> But yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's, it's called a hundred percent raw. And um, usually what they do is like, like Friday night, they'll do the strict curl mm. and then they'll do the, the power meet on Saturday. So it's a fun okay. thing to do that Friday night you get there. I, I like it. Um, do you have, uh, are you in school now? Yeah, I'm uh, currently a sophomore at University of Toledo. Okay. And uh, is it hard to manage the lifting? Or I guess now a lot of people are saying with the, with the, if they're doing school on the computer, it's easier. Yeah. Most all my classes are online pretty much, but uh, I'll train Tuesday nights, Thursday nights, and then Saturday and Sundays I go in at 630 in the morning. So it's not too bad. All right. You train, you train multiply, you know, and, uh, Basically, everyone in my world is in like the raw category. There are some people in the raw category that are like I've heard uh, people like multiply people say they don't like some of the raw people because they're snobby against the the multiply people, and they're right. That is true. Which, uh, but I'm not. It's just same sport, just you know, different rules. I I like it all. I just happen to compete in raw, but. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see if your training method is different due to you competing with multiply. I mean, I started off training raw and most of it's the same. The only thing that really changes with multiply is I don't pull conventional anymore. I'm pulling sumo. My squats have gotten super wider on my feet. Yeah. And I guess the main difference would be with benching now with the shirt. I hit more board work than I usually would do raw. I would never use boards ever when I hit raw. It was just straight chest enough. 
Yeah, the wide stance in the squat. Just, I've been talking with this guy. I just first name Phil. He he squatted four times his body weight. Really great lifter, but you know he was a war equipment. And uh, are you there? Are you, are you frozen? You there? Uh, yeah, I think my internet just crashed. It's okay. You got, so did you hear what I was talking crashed. about? This guy, Phil, the, uh, he squatted four times his body weight. Yeah. Anyway, so, you know, I've been talking to him, and uh, he's, he wants me to open up my squat stance really wide. And I've tried it in the past, and, like, I can't hold my back tight really wide. And I, mm. I, I just think that – He's not understanding the raw lifting, like, you know, maybe with the suit and everything that would work. But one thing he, he did mention to me to do um, was the Zercher squats. Okay. Those I'm going to start doing. Uh, I train in eight week cycles. So this is my, today is my squat for my eighth week. And then next week I take off and then I start again. So when I start my next cycle, I'm, okay. I'm, gonna, I'm doing the Zercher squats. I think it'll help with my backgrounding and help work on the strength of my quads. But, um, well, what's, um, I do a lot of, uh, what do you do? I, I do a lot of reverse hypers too for what's the lower back. Chris? Yeah. Yeah. You can help me out get wider. You have a reverse hyper machine to use? Yeah. I've been at my gym. That's yeah. That's nice. I, <laughs> yeah. I gotta put, I gotta find a video of the reverse hyper extension machine I made up. I like, on this like white rack, like on the, the, the catches on the bottom, I just, I put a piece of plywood across, I, I clamped it on and I hung a chain and, and like put the weight on the chain. And I, oh. that's, that was my cheap <laughs> reverse hyper extension for a while, but it was, it just took, it took so long to set up. It was such a pain, but I, it would be nice if I had one, I would use it. Um, what other, what other sports have you done? I saw, you think you were doing rugby, right? You there? Again, it's going down again. Can you hear me? Yeah, I think I'm back. Okay. I'm just going to switch, I'm going to switch over to my hotspot because the school off is not being able to handle this. Sorry about that. What other sports were you involved in? Uh, so throughout high school, I played soccer my freshman year and growing up. That freeze up again? Yeah. Yeah, I switched I switched over my hotspot, so we should be good to go. Okay. So, so I think I think it was you. You you were the rugby guy, right? Yeah, I played rugby. So freshman year of college, I went to a school upstate New York. I don't know if you know about Ithaca. Yeah. So I went up to Ithaca for a uh, year and a half and I played rugby over there. And it was fun. It seems like I if you want to get injured, that's the perfect thing to do. I, I, the worst thing I've had was two concussions. <laughs> never got injured or anything else. Never saw anybody with a horrific injury, just concussions. Uh, well, I mean, that's not nothing. Two concussions. <laughs> you said it yeah, like yeah. nothing. Uh, okay. Here's a, uh, here's a question. Be careful how you answer it because the last guy who answered it was kind of upset how he answered it and wanted to change it. And I was like, well, it's already up on the internet. Um, <laughs> what are your views on steroids? Okay. I'm not against it. I believe that if you want to take it, you should be allowed to take it in certain circumstances. Like I believe if you're competing in a drug tested federation, and you're skimping out on it, I don't believe you should be taking it. But if you're doing non-drug tested, 
take it. Because your body at one point needs to recover the way it has to. Yeah. And if you need to take it, it's another supplement. It's the same thing as protein and creatine. It's just another supplement you can use. All right, Although at... I don't believe... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't believe like NFL players should be using it because it's a straight-up contact sport. You're going to get an advantage. But I don't see the problem with baseball players juicing up. It makes it more fun for people to watch. There's, there's a very interesting view. I, that's the only... You're the only person I've ever heard articulated that way. It's a, that's, that's an interesting viewpoint. Um, the uh, so we bringing up uh, supplements. Uh, you, do you use a pre-workout? Yeah, I do. I use uh, G-Code. I use their Vice pre-workout, so it's like a tri-chamber. And then I'll do like BCAAs, but that's about it. All right. How many times more than the recommended dosage do you take? Uh, <laughs> one. I'll do two scoops. I'll do do drag two drag scoops normally. Do two. Nobody takes the recommended dosage. It doesn't. It doesn't do enough. It's one fifty. <laughs> I need at least three hundred to kick well, in. Here's here's the argument I have with my wife. Right, she weighs a hundred and four pounds. Right, so she takes one scoop. Well, I'm like, well, I should be able to take a, two at least. Yeah, I mean, I'm two sixty, two sixty five on a good day. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, I should be taking three. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and creatine, do you take creatine every day? Nah, I don't. I don't really believe in creatine. I'll do ZMAs before I go to sleep, but that's about it. I noticed. I, I mean, in my personal experience, when I like, I loaded up on creatine the way like they say you're supposed to, and been taking it steady. I have noticed that I've had a little bit more force. I, I, mm. I, I, I well, you know, I don't. I don't lift very much anyway, so <laughs> don't don't take my advice. All right. Now, most competitions now, I think basically all competitions now are lifting in kilos. Now, do you train uh, in kilos? No, I still train pounds. That's right. That, yeah, only Americans train in pounds. Yeah. I yeah, I don't like kilos. Drives me nuts. I, I could barely do enough math with weights. I can't, I can imagine doing kilo conversions. I spoke with somebody last night who's in Iraq, he's a power lifter, and he's pretty good. And uh, he's lifting in kilos over there. And I told him, I said, listen, we fought a whole war there. We, we beat you guys. You should be lifting in pounds. You know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, uh, okay, equipped lifting. We're talking about, yeah, the wide stance um, and training with it. You know, I think... I, in, in my opinion, I would think that if you're going to be lifting like multiply, like you're going to need to be lifting with bands a lot. I think that would be especially beneficial mm -hmm. because you're going to get that help from the suit at the bottom, right? But at the top, you're not, you know, so I would think to mimic that bands mm -hmm. would help a lot. Yeah. So with my, I'm trained with uh, Chris Delfave, who's like, top tier right now in multiply and he's super big on ar and like accommodative resistance so every workout i do it's either chains or bands no matter what it's always and i've seen a carryover from i've been with them for a month and a half and my numbers have been shooting up they've it's helped a lot what about chains? especially when i take them off <laughs> chains are fun they look cool. they're annoying they're annoying if you i figured out if you don't set it up the right way they don't do anything yeah. Like I was deadlifting the other day and I had them on. And since I was such a wide sumo puller, I had to put them straight up in the middle to even get weight off of it. Yeah. So you got to like tweak it a lot and play around with it. But I love chains. I've been playing with them for a while. Like my, my chains are, yeah, I got two sets. I weighed, I weighed them, they're, they're 52 pounds each. So 104 pounds together, which I've, I think I finally gotten like the like the perfect weight of chains. I like that. And um, yeah, for the deadlift, I have to really like get it like on there tight so that like the second the bar moves, the chain moves. Because if you don't, it, it, it's, it's not going to work. Yeah, it's not worth the, it. The squat, I have it set. I got it set perfect for the squat. I have a, like a, a little chain attached to all the chains so that like mm. when it's when I take it out of the, the rack, like like it. it it's um like they're they're 
all off the floor. You know what I mean? Like it, it works. Yeah. It, I, I like it. I like, I like using both. I like using the bands and the chains. I like, we do, I'll do a lot of band work on deadlifts. I, so I feel kind of, we kind of like mimic speed work. I, I feel there's a difference like with the chain. Mm-hmm. I feel, I don't think it's the same exact thing. I feel that like with the, yeah. band, like, like when you get like three quarters of the way up, like the bands start to feel like a million pounds. They, they really do. It's not chains. Like it's like this incremental weight getting added, but the bands just, they just seem to get so heavy at the, at the, the very top. Um, let's see. This is something I argue with, with the, I don't really argue with. I just ignore it. Uh, stretching and warming up. Uh, well, how do you, how do you, do you stretch and warm up and how do you? I do. So stretching wise, I'll do dynamic work. So I'll like do lunges. I'll do like kickups, but everything's moving. I'll do like arm circles. And then in my program alone, I have, uh, Chris puts in my own warm up. So every workout, no matter what it bench, deadlift, squat, I'm doing, uh, what's it called? Uh, belt squats. Yeah. Belt squats, belt squats, belt squats. He's a big stickler about it. I hate it sometimes, but it's been working. I love it. Then on uh, most deadlift days, I'll do belt squats, kettlebell swings. Then squats, I'll do belt squats, reverse hypers. And then when it gets fun is on bench days. So I'll belt squat and then I'll do a PVC pipe or tsunami bar. Yeah. That's fun. My, my wife, she does all this dynamic stressing like you do, like walking down back and forth and kicking herself in the butt. And I don't know. I just, I don't have the patience to do it. <laughs> and everyone keeps telling me to do it. It's going to extend your, your, your lifting career and it's good for you. And it's just, uh, <laughs> it's just too boring. I just like getting loose. I find that when I do like static stretching, it hurts more. I like tighten up a lot more on it. Uh, what are your weaknesses? Benching. By benching. By far my weakest one out of the three. Well, uh, my wrist. Well, well, he, well, I always tell everybody this, right? Like, no, no one is going to be good in all three lifts. Like, the, yeah. the, there is, I don't, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'd cone, but there's like, there's no one that's a, a like the, the best squatter in the world, the best bencher in the world, the best deadlifter in the world. You know, it's just when you lift, you just, you just, I don't know, like, like mine happens to be the bench. I'm pretty good in the bench. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm not really that great. In, I'm not horrible in the squat. And okay. in the deadlift, but like, um, but for, for a total, like being good in the bench is totally like almost useless, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've heard a lot of people say uh, the meat doesn't start till the bar goes off the ground. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the deadlift makes or breaks everything. Yeah, it's the deadlift, uh, then the squat, then then the bench. I would think, but for a total in the meat. But if you want to be the coolest guy in the gym, you want a big bench. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm raw benching three fifteens with my max. There's girls out there that raw bench more than me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. I really, I really liked powerlifting better when there really weren't many girls lifting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It was, I mean, when, when I started in, in 2001, th- there weren't that many girls at the meets. It really, there, it was few. Now it's like almost half the meet is girls. It's totally, totally. And they're fucking, and they're strong. Yeah. They're, they're picking up some crazy weights. I mean, like I said, my wife, she, she weighs uh, 104 pounds. She's pulling about 250. Uh, she benching. I can't, I can't recall. She, I, she's benching near a plate and uh, she squats. What does she squat? I don't want to put a, 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 the wrong number out there, but she squats a lot. She's pretty good. But her, her deadlift, I think, is the best for like 104 pounds doing the deadlift in 250. She's pretty good. And, um, and she's like, powerlifting for her has been hard because, um, 
Like she started, uh, we met on a powerlifting team at St. Francis College. That's how, that's okay. how we met. And uh, when, uh, <laughs> when, when I started on the team, we were squatting the same weight. <laughs> it was just, it was like, I had like, I had zero strength, zero. Like, I, I think my, my first day in the gym, I, you know, like I, I asked the coach, I was like, can I lift with you guys? He had a t powerlifting team going. He said, yeah. He was like, the guys were squatting on one rack. The girls were squatting on another. He was like, go squat with the, with the girls. And I, they, were, <laughs> they were squatting 95 pounds. And it was a lot for me at the time. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, well, I guess start from somewhere is what it is. But yeah. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So she had, you know, she could have been so much further along. But the problem is, you know, with kids, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. We have three kids, so like, it, you know, she so she had a pause, like, you know, she had kids. She trained a little bit, then she got pregnant again. Trained a little bit, then she got pregnant again. So that really, that really slowed uh, messed her training up for like about six years, you know. So now she's been training pretty steady for say uh, like six years now. So wow. yeah, she, and she's now she yeah, she's starting to get up there and start breaking. Break, breaking records again so she's getting there which is pretty good yeah we have for, for the age too because mm. age really makes a big difference yeah uh yeah, your body takes a toll <laughs> yeah it, it really starts to the recovery starts to like really make a difference like i'm 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 37 and like i know like i see a lot of lifters who are like really old i mean in the, in the 80s and stuff like like I know, I know a guy, Pete Miller, he's 80, 80 something. And he's going out to Vegas to a competition to deadlift and he can't, he can't. Oh, I've seen, I've seen him around. Yep. Yeah, Pete Miller. I mean, I, Pete Miller is one of those guys. Everybody knows Pete Miller. And uh, it's, it's great that I know Pete Miller because he's one, like when I want to interview people, he, he calls them up and says, you, you, you're doing his podcast. <laughs> so it's nice to have <laughs> as a friend yeah he started off he was a he was a great olympic lifter and i'm pretty sure that's mm -hmm. what he's in new york hall of fame for for olympic lifting not for the power lifting and uh well he there's a funny story with him you want to hear it yeah let's go he was working with the uh, the olympic committee on scouting out um uh, places where they were gonna compete and so they were in cuba at the time and Fidel Castro was at the meet site comes up to him and Fidel Castro asks Pete Miller if he's fat <laughs> and, and like thank god he didn't like <laughs> tell him yeah you are fat he just came up <laughs> with a good answer he was like you know what uh Fidel Castro it's not about you know how you look it's about what you're eating that's what you need to focus on <laughs> So you come up with a good answer. Got lucky. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> um all right. Uh this is a, this is important. Do you prefer cats or dogs? Dogs. All right. Good. All the way. Good. <laughs> um what's one thing you wish you knew when you started lifting? Recovery. Recovery how to recover. I, I mean, I trained a year and a half on my own before I met Chris and it was, I just got like six days a week and just beat myself up. And I'm feeling it now. I'm only 20. I'm just like, I'm feeling like I have bicep tendonitis growing. So I'm feeling like the works of me being, I guess, dumb in recovery. Yeah. I, uh, Oh, I wasn't lifting for a little bit. Then I jumped back into lifting. And then uh, I was doing um, strict curls twice a week. Mm. And I don't know. I know some people, I mean, I, I, my training strict curl twice a week is different than doing biceps twice a week. It's like, it's really hard on the bicep. And yeah, well, I was beating myself up so bad. Uh, I actually told my wife, I was like, you know, I feel sore, but like my, my muscle feels sore from the inside. Like maybe my muscle's growing from like the inside. And she, she was like, 
<laughs> are you an idiot? Like the bicep tendon. <laughs> I was like, nah, it's not bicep tendonitis. And I just kept lifting to the point where I couldn't lift my arms. And, and uh, <laughs> it took like six to like eight weeks, I think, to like finally start to go away. But like yep. those six weeks, like it felt like two years when you can't train, right? It feels like forever. Yep. I thought I was never gonna up my bench. To, I thought I was never gonna be able to use my arms again. I just I just Yep. And the doctor was like, he was like, relax. He was like, it's it's fine, just give it a couple of weeks. But I felt it was that <laughs> you didn't get it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Are there any myths that you hear people say about powerlifting that you'd like to dispel? Yeah, going back to steroids, the myth that everybody is juiced up. There, there's that big thing that all the guys are breaking records are all juiced up. I don't really – I don't know anybody right now that's juiced up personally. Everybody's raw. No one's on gear or anything. I could break I'm that numbers. personally because anyone that looks at me will know 100% that I'm not on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, and a lot of people – a lot of people also think that steroids just helps you grow. I mean, it's more of a recovery thing. You can't just take them and you magically get big. But that's what I keep hearing. You know, like I'm not like, I didn't grow up around steroids or lift around it. So like, I really know nothing. I know nothing about it. And that's what I keep hearing from people that were around it, that it's re that recovery. Yeah. Recovery, you know, that's, that's what it is. Um, all right. Powerlifting is a tough sport. Uh, these things happen, pooping, peeing, vomiting, blacking out. What's happened to you? Uh, I mean, just two weeks ago, I almost shit myself squatting. Almost? That doesn't count. Almost, almost. I let out a fat one, a little wet one last week on deadlifts. Every it's just natural. I've, yeah. I've, yeah, I've seen girls piss themselves on deadlifts. It just... Well, the girls got a pregame. They got like, like my, oh, oh well, sorry, Ujel. Um, But, <laughs> you know, like when she knows she's going for a heavy squat, you know, she wears a pad, like she knows. Like, yeah. And for, uh, I know a lot of old power, school powerlifters, they always bring extra pair of underwear to the meet. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's yep. a powerlifting secret. And uh, what, for, for me, the only lift I have like the issue in is the squat. No, not the squat, I'm sorry, the deadlift. The deadlift, mm -hmm. so like sometimes, you know, that, that, that PR deadlift, you know, so it <laughs> comes out a little bit. And, uh, yeah, so another funny story. <laughs> this was like <laughs> a week ago. So I didn't think anything came out. I felt like maybe, but I didn't think anything came out. So I go to the bathroom after I deadlift. Apparently, a, a little piece of poop fell on the floor. I didn't know. <laughs> I go to the bathroom. I walk out of the bathroom. My wife goes in the bathroom. She thought there was a leaf on the floor. She picks it up. <laughs> it was not a leaf. It was poop. <laughs> Sorry. Listen, it's a sport. You're in. It happens. <laughs> yeah. It's the one thing, too, about being in gear, especially in a suit. It's like if I, if I don't go to the bathroom before I get there, I'm not going until I'm done. I'm not taking off the suit and putting it back on. It's staying on. I got to do what I got to do. Yeah, those things are hard to get on. I've seen. I went to a USAPL meet, and I went once. You know Pat Susco? Uh, I've heard of him. I don't know him personally. I've heard of him. Yeah, he grew, we grew up in the same neighborhood, and he's a real nice guy, amazing powerlifter. And um, I went to go watch his son uh, uh, lift out at Iron Island at the gym in, uh, in, in Long Island. And um, it, watching these guys put these suits on, it looked like more, harder work than, uh, than, than lifting the weight. I sweat putting mine on. Yeah. I, I do. Yeah. I, I want to try one day. I do want to try it one day. I'm, uh, yeah. Maybe after, I'm going to the, a competition June 13th. So maybe after that, I'm, maybe mm. I'll do a, a, a meet. It's fun. It's fun. Um, oh, what's the dumbest thing you've ever seen in the gym? 
<laughs> I mean, I went in this morning with my friend. He was maxing out his bench at the school gym. I saw a kid uh, shoulder pressing down of his belly button. He would go up and all the way down. I don't know how the hell his elbows didn't snap and go right back up. I was like, this kid's going to fall over. I was just waiting for it. In college, uh, my coach had a picture of his butt. And if you did something really stupid, you had to wear it around all day. And like one of the, <laughs> one of the best, yeah, now you couldn't do that. Now you go to jail for that. But now yeah. um, it's this guy, An Angelo. Um, we had a, um, what do you call the thing to pick up the deadlifts? Oh, like the jack thing, the double jack. We had a, a handmade one that's from that was before they they sold these things commercially, and it only like you had to pick up one side and someone loaded it. You know what I mean? It was just for one side. Yeah. <laughs> so he let he was like he must have been bending over it a little bit. He let it, it it slipped out of his hand. It hit him in the face. It knocked his tooth out. It was hysterical. <laughs> the, the funny thing I ever saw. That was that was a good one. Um, well, so you, you said you had bicep tendonitis. Have you ever had like any like yeah. really bad injuries? Like, like have you torn a muscle? Not, thankfully not, nothing yet from lifting. Yeah. Thank God. Probably going to happen sometime soon in the future. It's just part of it. I'm ready for it. I'm bracing. What's well, usually Hopefully the pack, serious. Right? That's what you always Yeah, do. a lot of pack. Yeah, a lot of pack work. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to blow out like a hamstring on like a squat suit. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I've heard that at least. I don't know. Um. Oh, as many reps as possible. The AM reps, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, people think I'm crazy. Uh, well, I, I, all my sets, I do as many as I can. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I adjust the weight to be to get to get the, you know, like, I know I've been lifting. So yeah. long, like, I know what weight is going to, is that, that if I do as many reps as I can, it's going to be five. You know what I mean? So it's really like, I am really not doing, you know, it's not like I'm doing 20 reps. Like I, I mm. adjust the weight to get the reps that I want, but I'm always yeah. like, and I'm not getting stuck on the rack. I'm I'm going to the point where I'm like, I know I'm not going to get another rep. Then I rack it. But so how are you training? Do you go in there with like, I'm doing, I'm benching 225 for five sets of five? Normally, I mean, I don't make my own workouts. So I can take all the hard work out of it, I guess. I like Chris do all that for me. So uh, normally I'll go in and it'll be like, he'll give me the workout for the day. And it'll be like, like I benched yesterday, I had five sets of doubles and I went up, I warmed up until 275. And then I have at my gym here, I have Jason McNutt, who's like a world record bencher. So he kind of takes the reign of like how much weight I put onto everything. So it's easier on me. So he kind of gauges where I'm at and I'll be like, I had that feel. It felt heavier, I'll go a little bit lighter. Yeah. So I kind of get like the middleman in it. So it makes my life easier. I just have to worry about lifting and that's it. What about time between reps? Depends on the crew. Sets. Between sets, not reps. Depends on the crew. Like we'll have squatting on Saturday. There were six guys on one mono and then I was on my own mono. So there are seven dudes at one time in a crew. So just however long everybody takes. But the heavier I get, the more I take. Like, I'll have to go. I'll get my knees wrapped, take two seconds off, relax a bit, breathe, get air in, because that's rough. Yeah. But it really depends. I don't really do anything. But when it comes to accessory work, I'm, like, 60-second breaks in between. I, it turns into, like, bodybuilding for accessory for me now. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so more like – yeah, in between sets and in deadlift, like it's like two and a half to five minutes. But like yeah. doing like tricep press downs, like you don't you don't need five minutes in between tricep press downs. No, not at all. Yeah. Um. All right. So I've never lifted in uh, multiply. Um. All I know I know is uh, raw meats. 
And, um, but from, from what I know, my experience in the raw meets, like, uh, uh, the other competitors are extremely nice, willing mm -hmm. to help. Well, you know, it's, it's very rare you have someone that's like not nice in a powerlifting meet. You know what I mean? Like, is, is it the same with the, uh, in like the multiply competitions? I think it's even closer in multiply. Cause I mean, I had Chris for no reason gave me a bunch of gear to use. So I never had to buy a shirt or a suit. Like he gave me everything he had. So that was like greatest stretch forever. I mean, now I train at main street, Jason's helping me. He brought in a shirt for me to try on. I had B the other day, give me a shirt to use. Everybody we're all in like the same weight class, but you're always pushing each other because you want to get better because someone else beat you. It's always that, oh, shit, he beat me. I got to beat him now. Yeah. Like that kind of competitiveness. It's definitely super close net dope community. That's cool. Um, yeah, see, our, our coach, right, is he started lifting in 1976. And mm. so there was no raw in 1976. Everything was with like single yeah. ply and knee wraps. And, uh, and when he became the strength coach at St. Francis College, uh, and he started the powerlifting club, he was, he wanted to do just a regular single ply, to, you know, USAPL. But, you know, the, the problem was, is that most of the, 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 the kids on the team couldn't even afford a belt, you know? And nope. so it was like, you know what? He was like this, uh, someone he knew, he knew Al Siegel started the, an organization called the ADAU. And he, he was like, you know, we'll just do that because you don't have to do, you don't have to, you don't have to buy anything, you know? So that, that's, yeah. how, that's how we wound up being, uh, going to, going raw. Um, let's see. Oh, well, I mean, do you, uh, do you bulk when before competitions and then cut at, start, you know, try and diet a little bit afterwards? I mean, I don't know anything yet because I don't compete till June, but I'm going down. I'm still going to stay in 275, but I'm cutting down to 250, hopefully by May, and then gain back up the bulk up again. I also just want to cut a little bit. Competition. June 19th. That's basically the same thing as ours, June 13th. Well, um, yeah. all right. So, so you want to cut down weight till May. And yeah, I got 10 more pounds. Adding the weight back on? Yeah, slowly. Yeah. I mean, from, from what I've learned from, like, the people that do it best, the bodybuilders, mm. uh, like, they're, they do, like, a quarter pound a week, down or up, you know? And yep. on, on your way down, like – like, you know, I'm not an expert in it, but my, my recommendation, you know, just make sure you, you're getting enough protein, you know, like one and a half times your body weight in protein, which is probably like half a cow. Yeah. You need to, it's, it's cause you need, it's tough because you're going to need to, you need to want to get all that protein in, but then you're also going to want to run a calorie deficit, which is going to be extremely hard, you know? Yep. Well, well, you know what? Well, your 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 best bet would be is cardio. Yeah. To to get that count because you're such a big guy and you're gonna need a lot of protein. Otherwise, you're gonna be losing too much muscle. I've just I've been walking. I've been doing like hill walks. You That's know? like my new cardio. Yeah, you don't want to do like me and crash diet, like because like. Yeah. Like, no. Because like I, I'm trying to be more dedicated about. You know what happens with me is like because I have you know, like a, some, like a body image issue. Like I'll like creep up and then I'll be like, Oh no, like I'm fat now. Like, and like I stop eating, you know, and it's just horrible nope. lifting. Just, you just, it, it, you wind up losing muscle. It's just a mess. You have to start all over again. So. Yeah. Like I'll wake up in the morning and I'm lean. I'm lean as hell, but by meal seven of the day, I'm bloated. I'm big. I look, it looks like I'm pregnant. I can't even suck anything in anymore. 
and it just recycles again. Oh man. Uh do you train any muscles only to look good? Um, I mean, I'm getting made fun of at my gym now because I have small bicep and triceps. So they're putting me on a powerlifting uh, bodybuilding plan to grow it out a little more because uh, I'm a reverse chicken. I got big legs, small arms, Well, that's which wh- I like it. Well, that's why the strict curl is nice. If your organization has the strict curl and now you have it now, it's like an actual thing to train like a, for a competition. Yeah. Uh, triceps, I think you have small triceps. Small, small for what they think. I mean, for a normal man my age, it's pretty big, but maybe for the game I'm going into. Oh, but you, you said your bench was your worst lift, right? Yeah, I yeah. got to fill out the shirt a lot more. That makes sense. But what are you doing for your triceps? Yeah. Uh, tricep extensions, kickbacks, uh, overheads. Uh, JM presses are pretty good. I've been adding those in a little bit. Yeah. A lot of banded too. Chris has me do a lot of banded work. So banded triceps, face pulls. All right. How badly do you hate CrossFit? Oh my God. I I can't. I can't. Watching them do a fucking pull up is the worst thing. A kip or what is it? a kip or whatever, the whales. It, it looks so painful. <laughs> it looks painful. I was talking about this the other night. Uh, I heard them like try. I heard uh, CrossFit people like lately trying to describe CrossFit as like functional, like 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 training, like functional. Yep. Like meaning like I don't know that like it it's useful. I guess like I like that none of the stuff they do is useful. Like pull, pulling a rope. I don't know. I, like I, like like it like strongman competitions are functional fitness. Like to me. Yeah. Like, like, go down and pick something heavy up and put it on a on a shelf. That's that's functional fitness, you know. Uh, stra- they should like you know strap a refrigerator to your back and go up a flight of stairs and put it, <laughs> you know, like everyday thing. Not I, yeah. Hit, hitting I, a tire with the hammer. I mean, I'm not saying that the stuff they do is not difficult. It's definitely difficult. I just, I don't know. Everyone, <laughs> I don't get it. I don't. I just don't get it. I think. Yeah, I don't. I, know what, I, I I really would like to have somebody on that really knows what they're talking about CrossFit. I like. I, it's, you know, I just I just don't get it. Um. Let's see. At least you're still pretty new into lifting. Do you have any any traditions or super superstitions with your lifting? Uh. On my setups. My squat setup, I'm always, I put my chin on the bar. I push down, I put pressure on my chin and kind of get my jaw locked up because I use a mouth guard now too. Yeah. So I like lock my jaw up. So I just don't move my jaw at all. And I'll just bite down. I mean, I always lift with the cross. I guess I pray before I lift. If you can, I mean, yeah, that's my superstition, I guess. I'll pray before I do anything. Oh, praying. Okay. No, because I was. Yeah. That's uh, if you listen to any of my podcast, and that, that's I always ask this question: if you have a faith that helps you through life yep. and through your lifting. Yep, for sure. I mean, I haven't been to church in like two years, but uh, I mean, I'm still still devoted. Good. There's just some things with that I don't I don't respect with some things that's been done. Yeah. So I like to stay away from it, but I'm still devoted. Um. I do what I got to do. Okay, so you you it seems like you're kind of like on a team, right? Like you're with these guys that are training. Yep. yep. Um. Like our 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 team, the Wrecking Crew. I mean, it's it's gone fluctuated like up and down with the amount of people since 1978. Like, yeah, like hmm. on the wall. That's that's when the, the team got created. And uh, like our team tradition is that if if your birthday lands on a squat day. You have to squat in your underwear. <laughs> I like that. That's team tradition. I like that. Do it. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't seem to be catching on with other people. No, no one else is doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oof. Um, anything? 
anything else you want to talk about? I mean, so with your crew, what's like your what's your atmosphere? Because I know like raw guys and multiply have like different workout atmospheres from what I've heard. Okay. Um, well, I mean, you can listen to my videos on um, uh, on uh, Instagram. You'll hear a lot mm. of girls screaming in the background. Uh, that's because there's right now there's one person that they used to lift on the team. He's far away and he's training by himself. He's planning on coming to the meet with us. Um, and as far as the, the team here, we, tr we train together. It's uh, my wife, uh, two of her friends and, uh, and me. Actually, no, she just got another, actually I got another girl, but um, we kind of like keep it separate. So like, like if like, cause like I got this girl in to, to train, but like, mm. I'm not going to like, I'm not going to train her. My wife will, cause yeah, you know, just keep it separate that way. But um, it's, it's all girls down here. It's all girls. I wish, I wish I had another guy down here, but the problem is, is that any guy that I get to come here for the day to train, they don't want to listen at all. Mm. Uh, you know, because we're all guys, we're all born with the, you know, an ego and with this like natural, like, like, no, I know what I'm doing with everything. Um, I don't know. Like I've had, I, I my my coach maybe maybe he he had this charisma he was able to get people to lift with him uh he was able to get a lot of girls to lift with him actually back before girls were lifting and um but he would always say that he liked coaching girls like a hundred times better than the guys because they just they would just listen and the guys would argue with them um but yeah that the atmosphere down here is a lot of girls and it's a lot of a lot of girl talk that's why I deal with. Do you crank up the mute? Do you crank up your heavy metal, or is that just a multiply thing? Okay. All right. So, all right. Music. What's what? What's your stand on? What's your stance on music and mirrors in the gym? I I hate mirrors. We don't have any mirrors. The one mirror's in the bathroom, but the lights don't work. Okay. All right. Music has to be cranked up yeah. to the max. Usually, any power lifter or Olympic lifter I talk to over the age of 60 cannot stand music and mirrors. <laughs> they just can't, they just can't do it. Uh, um, yeah. The younger, younger people, yeah, they need the music. And uh, a lot of people like, like, like the mirrors. Um, like I was speaking to um, Naomi Kooten. You ever heard of her? Okay. Yep. Yeah, Naomi Kooten, she squatted 225 when she was 12 years old. She weighed 98 pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, well, now she's squatting down 340 or something like that. And she, she only she weighs like around 140. She's a great lifter. But she lives right near me. Uh, but of course, there's this whole COVID thing. You know, she, she can't go over there. But um, uh, yeah, they have one mirror. They call it their compromise mirror. It's like to the side. So that when like huh. the father's spotting her, he could see the depth from the side. Mm. You know? So they have one okay. compromise mirror because they hate mirrors. But when I <laughs> my coach, he's an older guy. He's not, he's not, no, is he? Yeah, he's over 60. Yeah, he hates music in the gym. His his stance on it is when there's uh when they start, he always says this, when they start playing, when they start squatting in, in like in the nightclub, then I'll start playing music in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> And self I, honestly, yeah. I seen him. He he threw someone on someone on our team. He took their cell phone. This was back when they were flip phones and didn't cost that much. <laughs> he, he chucked it and smashed it. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, we do. I honestly, we had music on, but by the time it's my turn to go up and lift, I don't hear anything. I have just you yelling, cursed, and whatever gets me going. I don't even care about the music at that point. Like I, all my, if you look at my stories, just yelling. Well, here's my, my, my opinion on music, right? Um, it's great when you're training 
the problem is when you i don't know some competitions i've seen have music on mm. um but most mostly the ones that i go to don't and if you're used to that screaming music in your ear to be able to do your just max squat when you get under the bar at the competition you are gonna feel like everything is just gone like what is you i don't know how to describe it but you're just gonna feel like you're in this void and all you're just and yeah. like is gone like like tw i've i've done that twice to myself at me like once with music I trained with music for like the first time. And then I realized like at the competition, it was weird. So what I do is like, I'll warm up with it. I'll, I'll do all my accessory work with it. But when I, when I go to do my set, I turn it off. Mm. And box squats mess me up at a meet. I don't know. Really? I don't know if this is a, 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 most of the guys that are doing it, uh, are using the suits and I don't know what the deal is. This is, this is, this is what happened to me. I was doing box squats. My box squats were about that much above parallel. I go to the meet. I squat the first squat, all red lights. That's exactly where I went to. And my, like I said, my, I've said before, my, my openers are what I can do for five. They're very easy. That's why I believe some people mm. do three. I think for five, I think your openers should be a one, two, three. And the second attempt, same thing, went to the same exact spot. And the third one, again, same thing. And I thought I was going deeper. I, I really thought I went deeper and I went to the same point. My, I was so trained to go to that point. I don't know if. Uh, maybe before, three weeks before the meet, I shouldn't have trained with the boxes. I should have switched back. I don't know. I was not experienced with this whole box squat thing. I tried it out and that, that's what happened to me. That's my story. I get, so when I squat, I'll do most of my stuff. I'll do warm ups with box. So I'll do like my first sets. So there'll be heavy sets with boxes and then I'll sweep the box out. So I'll do like my last three or four sets without a box mm -hmm. and I'll just get go with death. Like I'll go deeper and deeper and deeper. Yeah, I haven't really felt like the sticking point with it, but I I don't know if it's Brian Carroll or Dan Bell. One of the multi ball guys hates box squats. They're like they didn't never use box squats. They don't like it. They so don't use many it. people like it right now that if you say you don't like it, like let me tell you, like I, like you just you you get attacked like you're like like a monster. Like for just for mentioning you don't <laughs> like box squats. It's like, I can't even compare, I don't know. It'd be like saying like, I don't know, like I don't like this kind of people. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. it's like people go crazy. And I'm just like, whoa, man, I just, I just don't happen to like that way to train. Like what's the big deal? <laughs> people like go, seem to go nuts about it. Yep. Um, hey man, I, I had a great time. This was fun. Me too. Me too. Yeah, it was nice to nice meet you. Yeah. And uh, what, when's, when do you meet? June 19th. June 19th. What, what's the organization? Yep. Uh, RPS. So Revolution Powerlifting Syndicate. Where, where is the meet? Uh, Vermont. In Vermont. Maybe, maybe I'll go up. I know a friend of mine is trying to get, get a meet together in New Hampshire, I think around mm. around that i think maybe that same weekend but uh if he doesn't happen to uh put it together yeah that'd be pretty cool to come up and watch what do you live i'm in jersey oh you're in jersey i'm from north jersey yeah i'm a jersey kid you're probably like 10 minutes from me i'm in greenwood lake yeah i'm in uh i'm in carney yeah so like right by newark yeah okay okay yeah right. so we're yeah. close right, listen man we gotta we'll, we'll get together one day and uh and train, yeah, man. For sure. It'll be a good time. I'll talk right. to you on Instagram. All right. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Catch you later. Bye. All right. Bye.